Hey guys. So I got a lot of really great questions and some feedback on my last rooting video. And this one, I'm not actually going to be rooting, but I'm going to go over in more detail, um, you know, supplies, tips, things like that. Um, there were some specific questions and then just some general stuff that I felt like I should have covered in my last one and didn't really think about. So I guess the first thing that I'm going to talk about is a basket or a holder, um, something for you to root with. Um, a lot of you, if you're watching other videos, you probably see people rooting on pillows and they do have uh, some really awesome ones that some people make. They like fill it with poly pellets and that seems to work well. I haven't used that before. Um, this is what I use. This is just a pet basket, actually. I think it was like a puppy or a kitten basket. And I just repurposed it and it works really well for rooting. Um, I go ahead when I'm rooting, this is pretty much how my head is and then I'm moving it around as I need. Um, this material is really fuzzy. It catches hair, so this gets dirty pretty often. And if your rooted hair rubs on it, it can make it frizzy and possibly mat it. So I just put a towel over mine. But I'm going to show you why I love this basket so much. All right, for my cushion, I can have my hair sitting right on top of it. I can just poke my needles right into it and everything I need is right there. Underneath my cushion, I have other things that I would need. I have extra more hair of the one I'm rooting. I have a piece of saran wrap to cover the hair with if I start, you know, if I finish in parts of it and if the hair is going to be lying down on the towel. I have mohair conditioner to use as I go. This mohair conditioner works really good. Um, I just got these little spray bottles at, I can't remember. I think maybe I just ordered them on Amazon, but they just come empty. And all I do is fill it a quarter of the way with fabric softener, just white fabric softener. I use free and clear. And then three quarters just with regular water. Um, I have brushing things. I have a really old, disgusting looking toothbrush that I've been using for several years, but I've never been able to find another one of these tiny ones. I don't even know where it came from. Um, and then I have a mascara wand. Both of these work really well just to brush the hair down while you're going. Um, you know, as you're going, hair can kind of start getting little flyaways in the way. So I just spray my mohair conditioner on one of these and brush it down to hold it. I have scissors. These are just regular cheap hair cutting scissors. Um, I use these to trim baby hair afterward, but I also use it to cut my hair. I have tweezers to pluck out excess hairs and I just have an extra bobby pin. And um, this is what I use to hold the hair so that I can always know what end the cut, it, the cut end is. Um, basically after I cut a small section of hair, I just bobby pin it and I know that the, you know, part closest up to the top of my bobby pin is my cut end. This is the bottom end. So I'll pull it out and root these pieces up here. All right. So. Now that we have that out of the way, let's start talking about some of the stuff that was in my basket. I did already talk about lamps a little bit, but I did get a question about using heat and lamps. So I want to just talk about it a little bit more. This is a Himalayan salt lamp with a base. And this is actually a replacement part. A Himalayan salt lamp will come with a crystal thing over it basically but this is just the replacement piece um, I did put a link to one in my last video but I'll put one again this time this is going to be the best type of heat source if you're going to root using heat 
you just stick it in the head. It holds firmly. The bulb is about in the middle and it's, uh, you know, middle on all ways, basically. So you, even if you turn it this way, it's really difficult to get it to actually touch the vinyl. If you use one of these, which are just a regular heat lamp, they have these little prongs. Um, these do not work very well. If you have the prongs held down here where you don't have any risk of burns, it does not go in far enough to actually heat most of the vinyl, unless maybe if you're working with a really small one. Um, these are dangerous. I don't recommend using them. As you're rooting and moving, they fall in like this. When they fall in, the bulb is directly touching your vinyl. If you have seen horror story posts about people who suddenly have a big melted hole in the side of the head that they're rooting, 99% of the time it is going to be because they were using a heat lamp like this. And, you know, when you're using heat, melting a kit is always a huge concern. Um, I have found using this kind, I have never melted a kit using this. When I first started and I didn't know the difference and I used one of these, I melted holes in several heads. It seemed like no matter how careful I was, they would get melted. Granted, my work wasn't very good, it, so it wasn't a huge loss, but it sucked for me. Probably did some customers some favors, though. Um, with You know, when you're using a heat source like this, this has a dimmer switch, and I don't have it plugged in right now, but it goes from really, really low to high. Usually when I'm getting ready to root ahead and I want it, it's, you know, very cold, I'm going to stick this in. I'm going to turn it on the high setting for, it kind of varies, 5-10 minutes. When the head is feels warm to the touch, I will turn my heat lamp down to all the way low. And that'll just kind of help keep the temperature that you have going. Um, you're not going to melt a head if you have your heat lamp on low. You wouldn't want to leave it overnight on low or something like that. I'm sure, you know, vinyl retains heat. I'm sure over time, if it's on constantly, it can damage it. But I root typically about six hours a day. I have my heat lamp on low the entire time. Sometimes if it starts to cool down, I will turn it up a little bit more to medium. And then when the head feels nice and hot again, I will turn it back down to low. Um, but like I said, doing it this way, I have never melted a head. So that is what I would recommend. All right. So this is going to be a bigger one. I'm going to talk about rooting needles. There are many, many different types of rooting needles. There are different sizes. There are different shapes. There are different barb amounts. When you get regular rooting needles, these ones here are from Amazon. I'll never use them. I don't know why I still have them, but I'm kind of glad that I do. Um, they come, they look like this originally. I got a really awesome tip from a small world nursery, and it is to use Plasti Dip. So I dipped all of my good needles, and they now have this, which is basically like Heavenly Illusions and stuff. But these needles only cost me $3 for 10 Um but I do want to talk about, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this um, to show up well enough. But this is an Amazon rooting needle. I don't know if you could see all of these little black specks. Those are barbs. And if you, sorry, I'm, I had it focused for a second. Um, but if you root with one of these, it is going to grab a lot of hairs. So you don't want to use these. A regular needle, this is a 42 gauge crown. 
if you can see. I can't get it to focus. This is a single barb needle. It has one barb there. And most of the good ones are only going to have one, sometimes two barbs. And there are a lot of different types. This is a crown. Crowns come in all different sizes. Um, you could see I have different sizes. I have 42, 43, 46, 40, and more 46 down here. I don't know why I did those separate. But, um, but different sizes will work better for different things. And with rooting needles, it's a little bit backwards. The higher the number, the skinnier the needle is. Or finer, I should say. Um, you could, maybe you'll be able to see the difference. Um, this is a 40 gauge crown. This is a 46 gauge crown. So it is just a bit thinner. And my light is bouncing off. It's actually making this one look bigger, but it's not. It's a lot finer. And it still just has the one barb on this one. So this is going to leave a smaller hole when you root with it. So I would use that in areas around the hairline. And there are others. There is what's called a spiral needle. If you can tell, the shape of the needle is in the spiral. This will grab a lot of hairs. It doesn't leave a very big hole. But if you are mono rooting, which is one hair per hole, or micro rooting, which is one to three hairs per hole, I don't recommend using this needle um, because it will grab too many hairs. But I do like these a lot for eyelashes. There is another needle type called a triangle. And it is because the shape of the needle is like this. It is just a triangle instead of a crown, which would have, you know, it's more round. It has four sides. Um, triangles I like a lot. They're great. They're kind of hard to find. Um, but they are pretty equal to a crown. This is called a forked needle. And I don't have luck with forked needles. They don't work well for me. But basically, a forked needle means that the tip is more blunt. It doesn't have that sharp edge. And it has a split right in the middle of it. Um, so it is shaped like this. And you would stab a hair, hopefully get one in between and get it to go in. Uh, some I'm not going to really go in depth on these because I've tried using them a lot. I don't have any luck with them. Um, but there are people who swear by them and really love them. Um, I'm just not one of those people. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about hair and then we will also talk about barbs. Okay, there are a couple different types of hair. This is alpaca. This is mohair. And I really recommend people, if they ask me, like, what should I learn on? I recommend learning on alpaca. Alpaca is a lot finer. It's a lot more difficult to root, and it takes a lot longer. If you can learn to root alpaca, since you don't know the difference anyways, any time after that that you root with mohair is going to seem like the easiest thing you've done in your life. And I'll tell you a pretty funny story. When I first was learning how to root, I didn't have a good group that would, you know, explain things to me. I was kind of embarrassed to ask questions. So I would look at people's posts and people kept talking about Angora. I didn't know that there are Angora goats. I thought Angora rabbits. So I ordered about a pound of Angora rabbit hair. And I learned how to root with that. 
and I don't recommend that. It is extremely, extremely fine. It's very hard to root. Um, it ends up looking pretty fuzzy. But so after that, when I did try alpaca, alpaca seemed so easy to me. And then I tried mohair and could not believe how easy it was to root mohair. Um, alpaca is going to be a lot finer. I'm trying to see if I could get just a... Uh, you can barely see an individual strand. Mohair is a little bit coarser. Um, I don't have any dark mohair right now, but it is still soft usually, um, but it is coarser than alpaca hair. Um, alpaca usually needs a bit more upkeep from collectors. It's just as strong as mohair, but because it is so fine, it can get matted, it can get frizzy. Um, since mohair is a bit coarser, it's easier to keep styled. And there are different, usually if you buy alpaca, you're buying alpaca. No matter what shearing it's from, alpaca is really soft and really fine. There are different types of mohair. There is kid mohair, which is the softest, yearling mohair, which is in the middle, and fine adult mohair, which is what this is, that is the coarsest. Um, it's not as coarse as human hair at all. It's still pretty soft. Um, but if you want like a really newborn look, I definitely would recommend alpaca. It is really like baby soft fine. And so now I'm going to talk about barbs with mohair. Okay, how I was talking about how the needle has one to two barbs. There are not barbs on all sides. And I'm just going to do a quick little maybe demonstration to, so that you could see what I'm talking about here. But the barb needs to touch the hair, basically. If you have a hair, you have your needle. If the needle is on the wrong side, it'll go in the head. The hair might go in the head, but it's not going to switch. If you don't have the best eyesight and you can't see where your barb is, I would just try when you're rooting. Do you know that side there's no barb when the needle is like this? Turn it up. Still doesn't work. Turn it to your right. And then that doesn't work, so you know that it's going to be down and that held in. So that is just an easy way if you can't see where your barb is. They are different on all needles pretty much. Um, so, you know, even like I have a bunch of 42 crown needles and they're from the same exact place, but some of them I need to hold with the arm to the right. Some of them I need to hold with the arm down. So when you you know, start rooting with needle, you just want to look at that and pay attention and figure out which side it's on and then remember that. <laughs> so next I'm going to talk about cutting and holding hair. So when you first open up your packet, um, this hair I've already used some of but it's going to look like this. This is Sarah Silk Mohair. It is actually really nice. It's very, very straight on the bottom. Not all mohair comes like this. Um, some comes down a bit like that. And what I usually do for that is I hold it and then kind of just trim the bottom so that um, I get a flat surface. Otherwise, out of your cut, you're gonna have all different sizes, lengths. So I'm putting my cut end, it came like this with the band on the top. I'm not going to cut a big chunk because I'm not using this hair right now. But I would just 
go down to about what I need. Cut that off. This top part is my cut end and it lines up with the cut end being on the top here. And it's easy to get these mixed up. If I tried rooting these from the bottom, it would not stay in. The ones that did stay in would get very frizzy. So I always want to keep my cut top up and know which side I'm actually going to be rooting into. And how I do that is I just use a bobby pin. I just cut, put my section in there to keep it. And then as I'm rooting, I just pull some out and, you know, hold it up a little bit more. And then I'm rooting the cut in. And another question that I did have was how to hold a head when you're rooting. And you're not actually really holding the head when you're rooting. Um, ideally, you want it on a pillow or, you know, something like that. So you're going to have it on your pillow. The way that you have it on the pillow is depends 100% on where you're rooting. If I was rooting here like this, I would just put my baby's head down a little bit. It's secure on there. I would take some of my hair and I would just root. When I needed to, I would turn it more to the side. As I started to get up higher, I would tilt it up a little bit, you know, you're, you're moving it around a lot as you go. And when you're using heat lamps, you'll kind of need to move your lamp so that your cord's not in the way. When you're rooting the bottom part, you want it close to almost upside down. And that is so you can hold it with the needle pretty flat against the head, kind of at this angle. Um, it's not 100% flat, but the hair is going to lay flat on the head like so. And I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I missed. Oh, about heads. So um, I think I mentioned this in my last video also. Um, but you do not have to use heat to root a head. And basically, you know, you use heat so that the holes are smaller, the head is easier to put a needle into. If the heads are too soft, when they flex, it can cause holes when you put a needle in and it'll look a little bit like chewed vinyl. Um, when you heat 99% of the time, it prevents that. So I like using heat. Um, sometimes if you have a really, really soft head, like a bountiful baby head, if you heat it, that thing is like mush. So when you go to root, it's going to push the whole thing in. So what I like to do for those types of heads, or just if I don't feel like using heat, um, when you do use heat, it kind of constrains you to where you can root. You need to be near a plug. Um, but you can just use regular poly pellets. I think I have some... Uh, steel weighted babies in here but all you would do is just fill the head completely with poly pellets you want it all the way up to here so that it's packed really tightly um this is what i have used for poly pellets to stuff the head so i have these paper towels here but you would fill it all the way and then just stuff a paper towel in and kind of pull the flange up to put it in and then that way your poly pellets will not fall out and then you can root the head like that also it keeps it firm it prevents flexing and you won't get those horrible um little spots um let me take a look at my list i think that is all that i have on my list so far so i'm hoping that those you know, tips and more in-depth explanation was helpful.
if you guys do have more questions, definitely let me know. And when I do my next video where I'm going to get my setting at my setup better so that I can actually root on camera and you guys can see my last one was terrible. I've, you know, I missed all those hairs and then I went on to root all this and I didn't miss a single hair in like six hours rooting. So it was so frustrating that of course on camera I do that. But so I want to make a better one actually rooting. So I will answer those questions if you guys send them to me in my next one. But I hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys next time.